Hallelujah. Uh, thank you for uh, uh, all your uh, I mean, uh, exhortation and also for the testimony. And we'll be praying for all of you all, all of you, uh, maybe uh, uh, later after the message. So this morning, we are gathering together in the presence of God to hear the, and listen to the word of God. And let's all concentrate our, uh, ourselves in, into the, into the I mean, word of God. And uh, uh, let us uh, turn our attention to the uh, book of uh, uh, Hebrews, chapter 13. You know, last Sunday, I was uh, preaching on the topic called uh, uh, the call of God to move forward. The call of God to move forward. I mean, and uh, uh, because of the lack of time, I was not able to complete the sermon, and I could preach only uh, uh, on two points. And uh, and I believe that uh, you all all are still uh, remembering uh, which are those two points. And I, I remember. I mean, I, I just believe that okay, you were you are remembering that two points. And the first one was the call of God leads us to outside the camp. So we were just discussing from uh, Hebrews chapter 13, uh, verses, uh, I mean, uh, uh, 13, uh, sorry, uh, 12 and 13. And the first point was the call of God leads us to outside the camp. And the second point was the call of God never leads us to the worldly prosperity. The call of God never leads us to the worldly prosperity. Amen. And I believe that that message was a blessing for you. And uh, today is the second part of uh, the same message. And I would like to I mean, share with you the, the other uh, few points from uh, that same message. And Cedric will be reading uh, the Bible verses for me uh, today also. And uh, let us all go to the third point of that message. The third point of that message is the call of God never leads us to poverty. The call of God never leads us to poverty. Amen. So we have been discussing about, and we have been, I mean, I, I've been preaching about, I mean, the God has called us to move forward. The God has called us to move forward. At the same time, the first call of God leads us to outside the camp, to do something. And it was, I mean, it was just, I mean, leaving all the comfort zone and going outside the camp or outside the, I mean, comfort of our, our, our life and, I mean, doing something for the name of the Lord. That was the first point. And the second one was the call of God never leads us to the worldly prosperity. No, today, many people are running after the worldly prosperity and they are always desiring for the, uh, for the blessing of this world. And they are always running after all kinds of the prosperity of this world. At the same time, we have to think about, I mean, the danger of the prosperity. Now we come to the third point, that is the call of God never leads us to poverty. Hallelujah. The call of God never leads us to the poverty. I mean, we will read one verse from Matthew chapter, I mean, 6 verse 33. Matthew chapter 6 verse 33. So uh, uh, Brother Cedric will re read that, I mean, I mean, verse. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. I mean, so this verse says that, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Hallelujah. You know, when I was, I mean, uh, when Alvin was preparing that these slides, uh, uh, he saw this point because I said, uh, I mean, you can, you can prepare the slide for this. I mean, a message, and he was preparing, and he was asking this question uh, to me this morning that, okay, uh, it says the call of God never leads us to poverty. And he was asking uh, why we are saying that, because, I mean, there are many people in poverty, and there are many Christians, there are many believers, uh, those who are uh, struggling for many things, and they are, I mean, going through the poverty. Uh, then why, how can we say that God will never lead us to poverty? So I'm coming to that point, you know. Uh, that question also encouraged me to share about these things, you know. In Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, it says that, I mean, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Hallelujah. You know, always, I mean, I, I, I like to I mean, speak and preach uh, uh, the reality of the truth of the word of God, the reality of the truth of the word of God. Hallelujah. You know, as a pastor, I know how to preach a 
it preach a kind of message of uh, I mean an excitement or uh, the message about the miracles or something I mean but I always I mean focus on the messages which make some changes in the life of the people and which help them to make new decisions in their lives I mean if my messages are not helping the people to take a decision in their life if the messages of uh, of a pastor i mean uh, will not take any 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 changes in the life of the people there is no meaning at all in the preaching there, there is no meaning at all in that message i mean so always i desire that whenever i preach there should be a change i mean in the life of the people i mean because I'm, because when I'm preaching, I'm just revealing the, the truth of the word of God. I'm not preaching about the excitement. Okay, so God is going to do that one and God is going to do this and miracle or something. I may preach that, but main focus is not to, I mean, not to, I mean, focus on the miracle or something. God will do that. But I believe that when we preach the truth of the word of God, the revelation that we get from the I mean, presence of God, when we preach about all those things, I mean, I mean, there will be a changes in the in the in the inner heart of the people. There, we, we should have the inner healing in our life. I mean, many times, you know, we are not having the inner healing in our life. I mean, we are just outwardly, I mean, worshiping God, and outwardly we are, I mean, praying and outwardly doing many things. But I mean, we are not focused in the inner healing. So that's what I'm thinking about, you know, whenever I preach, I mean, let God do some changes in the life of the, I mean, people, hallelujah. So that will happen. And I believe that miracles will happen in due time. That's my belief. Miracles will happen due time. And we need not to run after the miracles and serve God faithfully. And God will, I mean, do everything, I mean, for us in right time. Hallelujah. So let us come back to, I mean, that, that, that verse, you know, uh, Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. Okay, God is calling us to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. You know, when we do that, there is no doubt God is offering all the needful blessings upon the people. Hallelujah. So we are supposed to, I mean, look for the kingdom of God, seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness or the righteousness of God or the kingdom of God when we do that there is no doubt at all hallelujah I mean God is offering all the needful I mean material and spiritual blessings upon the people of God hallelujah you know do not be worried about anything for tomorrow because I mean God's promise is all these things shall be added unto you hallelujah and he said i am with you and i will care for you hallelujah what's the reason that we are seeking first the kingdom of god the reason is we understand in our inner heart that when we follow jesus and when we i mean i mean follow the righteousness of god and we, when we seek the, the the name of the lord and the kingdom of god and when we seek and work for the kingdom of god for the expansion of the kingdom of God, our God has given us the promise that I'm I'm with you always. Hallelujah. I'm with you always. And also I will care for you. Hallelujah. Remember, our God is able to care for the people of God. Hallelujah. Then why should we worried about I mean all these things like the, the other Gentile people? The other Gentile people, they are always worried about all the worldly things. But the people of God never never hallelujah are no uh, never i mean they are i mean uh, worried about all those things of this world but they are always thinking about the kingdom of god hallelujah how can i mean i be a, a profitable for the kingdom of god how can i i mean do something for the for the expansion of the kingdom of god that is what we have in our mind hallelujah so remember almighty god will never lead us to poverty the almighty god will never lead us to poverty hallelujah for example you can read one more verse from uh, uh, the book of Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 30, verses 8 and 9. Proverbs chapter 30, verses Remove 8 falsehood and, and lies. Remove falsehood and lies far from me. Give me neither poverty nor riches. Feed me with the food allotted to me, lest I be full and deny you and say, Who is the Lord? or lest I be poor and steal and profane the name of my God. Amen. 
This is a prayer of a wise man, Agur. This is a prayer of a wise man, Agur. Okay, you can call it as Agur or Agur. So uh, let us read that, uh, I mean, that verse. It, it says that, you know, I mean, give me neither. He says that, give me neither poverty nor riches, but feed me with the daily bread. It's very clear. Clearly, he's praying. He's a wise man. He's praying that, Lord, give me neither poverty nor riches, but feed me with the daily bread. Here he prayed for a middle stage of the life. He is praying for a middle stage of the life. Means he is praying, Oh Lord, do not make me rich or poor, but give me my daily bread. How many of you are ready to pray this morning the same prayer that Jesus also was, I mean, giving us, and, uh, and Jesus also was teaching his disciples? Hallelujah. Here, this man, the wise man, he's praying that, Oh Lord, I need. The middle state of the life. I don't want the. I don't the riches of this world. I don't want the. I mean, po, I mean, poverty of this world. But give my daily bread, because he was knowing that both the poverty and the prosperity will lead him to the temptation to deny God and to say, "Who is Lord?" Amen. He was. I mean, well aware about the danger of the poverty, the danger of the richness of this boy hallelujah he was clearly knowing that the both the poverty and the prosperity will lead a person to the temptation uh, to deny god there is a chance that he may deny god and there is a chance that he may say who is the lord who is the lord and also there is a chance to steal from others and profane the name of the lord you read verse 9 once again is that it verse 9 once again lest i be full and deny you and say who is the lord or lest i be poor and steal and profane the name of my god praise god remember that both the poverty and the prosperity will lead us to temptations sometimes you know there, there is a chance that we may ask who is the lord if i'm getting all the prosperity Okay, if I'm, I'm earning everything with my strength, I may ask a question, who is Lord? I don't know. I don't have any relation with God. I mean, I'm doing all these things and I mean, because of the strength and because of my health and because of my strength and because of my education, I'm doing all these things and I'm trusting always in myself. At the same time, here he says that there's a temptation to deny God. There's a temptation to deny God if you're getting the prosperity. At the same time, if you're getting the getting the poverty, there is a there is a chance to steal from others and profane the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. So remember, both the poverty and the prosperity will lead us to temptation. So let us be content with what God provides us. Hallelujah. So let us be content with what God provides us, and let us be I mean satisfied with what God is providing every day in our life. That's the reason that man was praying, "My Lord, do not give me the poverty, and also do not give me the prosperity." Hallelujah. I need to be I mean satisfied with what I have, and that I. Need the daily bread you know in matthew chapter 6 verse 11 also i mean jesus also is teaching i mean his disciples and and he is teaching like this when you pray pray like this father give us our daily bread hallelujah i mean father give us our daily bread you know jesus was not saying that okay you just pray like this oh god give us all the basic of this world for one year or for, for 10 years for generation to generation no jesus was saying you just pray like this i mean father god give us our daily bread give us our daily bread this, that means we should have a close relation with god each moment of our life each moment of our life when when we have that relationship with god i mean every time every time when we come to the presence of god we will ask to the lord oh lord i need your help oh lord i need your presence of god i need your help oh god i need your provision of god hallelujah but when we have everything we will not have that connection with god we will not go to god we will not ask anything to god and we will be always i mean trusting in 
apostle. Hallelujah. But when we, we do not have anything, I mean, we will go to the presence of God and we will ask to the Lord, oh Lord, I need your God. I need your permission of God. I need your protection of God. Hallelujah. That's why we were hearing uh, from the Psalms, uh, I mean, this morning. Hallelujah. God is our provider. He is our protector. Hallelujah. But remember that, I mean, whenever we go to the presence of God, we have to pray, oh Lord, give us our daily bread of God. Hallelujah. Whatever I mean, the spiritual manna we are getting daily basis. Hallelujah. The material food and the blessing, the physical food also, we are getting daily basis. Hallelujah. And we have to ask to the Lord. We have to go to the presence of God. We have to, I mean, I mean request to the Lord, oh Lord, I need, I need the, the, the daily bread of God. Hallelujah. That means God will provide all our daily needs, but he will not lead us into poverty. That is the promise of God. God will never lead us to poverty. But God will not le never lead us to prosperity also. But God will provide all our daily needs. God will provide all our daily, daily needs. Even we were, I mean, I mean hearing uh, the, 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 the message from Pastor Prince for yesterday, I mean, for the, for the, for the fasting prayer. Hallelujah. About the, about the provision of God. I mean, for, for, for Prophet Elijah. You know, the provision of God for Elijah at the brook of the Kirit through the ravens. And also the provision of God for him through the widow of Sarepha. So God provided, I mean, everything in due time for Prophet Elijah. Hallelujah. You know, he was not providing, I mean, uh, the, the food, I mean, for all the days, for, for one year or something. I mean, whenever there is a laxity in our life, I mean, we have to ask to the Lord, oh Lord, I mean, fill me with, with all the blessing, or maybe the spiritual and the material blessing of this world of God. But I need the blessing for that moment. You know, Elijah was fed by God in different ways. Hallelujah. We see the provision of God for Prophet Elijah at the brook of Kirith. When it, it was tied up, I mean, God was leading him to the another place that is called, I mean, the Seraphat. You know, God arranged that widow in Seraphat as the provision of God to give him the food. Hallelujah. God will arrange the ravens. God will arrange the widow of Seraphat whenever we are faithful in the presence of God. Hallelujah. You know, even though there are some troubles in our life, there are some struggles in our life, God will arrange somebody to care for you. God will never leave you or let you down. Hallelujah. How many of you believe this morning? I mean, hallelujah. God will never leave me. Hallelujah. God will, I mean, never, I mean, let, never let, let me down. Hallelujah. God will never fail. Hallelujah. So this morning, this is the message that, uh, I mean, God is giving you. God has called you, I mean, for the kingdom of God. I mean, he will not, I mean, lead you to the poverty, but God's presence and God's promise is saying that I will be with you. I will provide you whatever you need. I will provide you whatever you need. Hallelujah. That's what uh, I mean, we understand from this particular verse. Hallelujah. I mean, the fourth point, the fourth point is the fourth point is the call of God to be sanctified. The call of God to be sanctified. That is the fourth point. Hallelujah. The call of God to be sanctified. That is from uh, Hebrews chapter 13, verse 12. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 12. We we'll read that verse. <clears throat> Hebrews chapter 13, verse 12. Therefore, Jesus also, that he might sanctify the people with his own blood, suffered outside the gates. Amen. You know, when you read that verse, it says that Jesus made the sanctification possible to all without any boundaries. Is that, is that, I mean, is that the word? You know, therefore Jesus also that he might sanctify the people through his own blood. Jesus sanctified the people, those who are believing in Jesus Christ through his own blood. You know, when we study about the Old Testament sacrifices, we understand the animal was supposed to bring to the altar and that animal was supposed to be sacrificed for the remedy of the sin of the people. I mean, at the same time, here we can understand the author is saying 
the book of uh, the, the order of the book of hebrew says that jesus made himself as a remedy jesus made himself and he shed his own blood on the cross of calvary to make possible to all without any boundaries hallelujah there is no boundary there is no boundary of race there is no boundary of color there is no i mean boundary of anything of this world i mean god jesus christ came into this world and he died on the cross of calvary to give the sanctification for every one of us hallelujah to give the sanctification for every one of us hallelujah and jesus died on the cross for the sanctification of each one of us hallelujah and now he calls us to believe in his death and be sanctified when we believe in jesus christ and when we believe that i mean jesus died on the cross for me then we are sanctified and we are saved and when we accept jesus as a personal savior we are sanctified hallelujah so you know i was teaching uh, about the sanctification in the adult class uh, i mean in the in the previous days in the church so i'm not uh, i mean explaining i mean much about this point that the call of god to be sanctified hallelujah and we already covered all those portions in the adult class so i'm just leaving that point and we will go to the i mean fifth point the fifth point is i mean the call of god encourages us to to bear the reproach i mean the call of god encourages us to bear the reproach reproach i mean that is from hebrews chapter 13 verse 13 Hebrews chapter 13, verse 13. We already therefore, read it in the last yeah, read, read. Therefore, let us go forth to him outside the camp, bearing his reproach. It says, let us go also to him outside the camp, bearing the reproach of Christ. Hallelujah. So this is speaking about bearing the reproach of Christ, the reproach of Christ. The reproach of Christ means if we are getting any shame because of the name of jesus that is called the reproach of christ you know when we live for god when we work for god when we do something for god i mean if you are getting any shame if you're getting any blame in the name of jesus christ if you are getting any persecution from this world in the name of jesus I mean, because of the sake of the name of Jesus Christ, that is called as the bearing the reproach of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Remember, there will be some reproaches in our life. Hallelujah. There will be, I mean, shame sometimes in our life. There will be blame. I mean, I mean, we'll have to get the blame from other people. I mean, sometimes when we are doing something for the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. There may be dishonor. Hallelujah. We may be, I mean, facing many persecutions and trials. I mean, whenever we are doing something for the name of the Lord. At the same time, be patient and receive it for the name of God. Be patient and receive it for the name of God. Hallelujah. That's what we, I mean, read about uh, Moses, I mean, in, uh, in uh, uh, Moses in uh, uh, Hebrews chapter uh, 11, verse 26. Uh, I mean, uh, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 26. We read about uh, Moses. You read that. Esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt, for he looked to the reward. What did he do? Moses. I mean, he left the treasures of the Egypt and suffered the disgrace for the sake of Christ. For the sake of Christ means for the sake of the people of God. For the sake of the people of God. You know, Moses was having a, I mean, good deputy, I mean, a reputation in, in, in front of other people. But he, even though he was having all the positions and all, and he is going to be become the, the main a main, I mean, leader of uh, the, 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 the Egypt. There is a chance. But at the same time, we have to understand one thing. He is leaving something aside. And Moses said that, okay, I will, I mean, I will, I will, I will leave all the, I mean, treasures of the Egypt and I will suffer the disgrace for the sake of Christ. Hallelujah. I'm ready to suffer the disgrace for the sake of Christ. That is what we understand from that words. Hallelujah. So this morning, let me ask you one thing. I mean, sometimes when we are getting the reproaches and when we are getting the shame, I mean, uh, for the name of the Lord, and when we are going through the I mean, struggles in our life, and when we are going through the persecutions in our life, I mean, don't you think that okay, oh Lord, I'm I mean I, I'm ready to I mean suffer for for 
for the name of Christ. Hallelujah. I'm ready to I mean, suffer the reproaches of, of this world for the name of Christ. Hallelujah. So this is what we understand. Moses is living all the treasures of the Egypt and he is just moving forward and to, to, to please the God and also to take the disgrace of the sake of Christ and the people of God. Hallelujah. And he is saying that again, and my people, the Jewish people, they are suffering. They are suffering suffering in Egypt, hallelujah. At the same time, I cannot be in a, in a comfort zone, hallelujah. I cannot be in a comfort zone. Everything is okay in Egypt. For Moses, everything is okay in Egypt. I mean, everything is okay. There is no, nothing is, I mean, lacking in his life. But at the same time, he says that I don't want all this comfort and I'm leaving all these treasures of this Egypt and I'm going to, 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 to do something for the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. And that's the reason that when God is using Moses as the leader of the people of Jew, uh, people of Israel. Hallelujah. And he was leading all the people, I mean, from Egypt to Canaan. Hallelujah. Even though he was not an able, I mean, person. Hallelujah. He was not able person and he was very weak and he was having I mean, some kind of I mean, troubles in his mouth and I mean, he was not able to I mean, talk. Hallelujah. He was not able to talk. He was a big person but God used him for the purpose of God. I mean, the purpose of I mean, bringing the people of Israel from Egypt to Canaan. Hallelujah. The reason is I mean, he took a decision that and I don't want any treasures of this Egypt. I mean, treasures of this world but I want to be I mean, useful by the name of the Lord. I mean, for the name of the Lord, for the expansion of the kingdom of God. This morning, I mean, this is the right time that we have, we can take a decision. Oh Lord, I mean, sometimes I'm in a comfort zone. Hallelujah. I have anything, everything of God and I'm full of God. I, I have everything. But oh Lord, I take a decision. The Lord, I'm ready to go outside and I, I, I'm ready to face the reproaches for the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I'm ready to, I mean, I mean, I mean, face the persecution. I'm ready to, I mean, take the disgrace of the people. I'm ready to take the, I mean, I mean shame and the blame of the people for the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. That's what we understand from, uh, from the life of Moses that God was using him in a, in, a, in a wonderful manner. Hallelujah. We will go to the sixth point. We will go to the sixth point. That is the call of God to go with Jesus. The call of God to go with Jesus. The call of God to go with Jesus. I'm, I mean, I'm giving the point slowly because uh, I know there are some people uh, are just nodding down the, the, the points so you can I mean take it down maybe the, it, it is there in the screen also so uh, the, the sixth point is the call of God to go with Jesus let us read again that same verse Hebrews chapter 13 verse 30 Hebrews chapter 13 verse 30 therefore let us go forth to him mm -hmm. outside the camp bearing his reproach very good no go with Jesus go with Jesus and bearing his reproach, his reproach. Listen, go with Jesus, meaning going and doing something with Jesus, not for our own gain. Amen? Not for our own benefit, not for our name, or not for our fame, or not for the publicity of ourselves, but the publicity of the glory of God. Hallelujah. So that's the reason I said in the, in the sixth point, it says that the call of God to go with Jesus. Amen. To go with Jesus. Hallelujah. That means going and doing something with Jesus only. Hallelujah. You know, I mean, don't trust in our own wisdom and strength. And trust in, I mean, always trust in Jesus Christ and, and move forward with Jesus in each realm of our life. Hallelujah. You know, uh, what is happening today? I mean, today, I mean, many, many, many people are doing many things for their own glory. I mean, they are doing many things, but that is for their own glory, their own fame, and their own publicity. But also, you know, uh, we have to think about uh, what Jesus was, I mean, saying to the people of God in Matthew chapter, in Matthew chapter 6, uh, I mean, uh, 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 verses, verses 1, 5, and 16. Three verses are there in uh, Matthew chapter 6. You know, uh, these verses, maybe, uh, maybe chapters, 
uh, are known as the as the uh, amount sermon of Jesus Christ. You know, when uh, he was speaking to the people, to the disciples, you know, all those people were uh, very much, I mean, amazed about the word of God. And they were just listening to the word of God in a tremendous way. And Jesus was saying three things, three points uh, in that portion. You know, in Matthew chapter 6, verses 1, 5, and 16. Okay, you read that three verses from Matthew chapter 6, verses 1, 5, 16. Matthew chapter 6, verse 1. Take heed that you do not do your charitable deeds before men to be seen by them. Otherwise, you have no reward from your Father in heaven. Verse 5. And when you pray, you shall not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogue and on the corners of the street, that they may be seen by men. Assuredly, I say to you that they have their reward. Verse 16, moreover, when you fast, do not be like the hypocrites with the sad countenances, for they disfigure their faces, faces that they appear to men to be fasting. Assuredly, I say to you, they have their reward. Remember, you know, in those days, there were many people, there were many Pharisees, and there were many I mean, scribes and leaders of the people of Israel. They were, I mean, thinking that whenever we do something, it, it must be for our glory, and it must be publicly we have to do something, and let the people know that we are doing this. To those people, Jesus, I mean, says in this Matthew chapter 6, three parts, three main things that Jesus is saying to them, that, that the first one is, Jesus said, do not do the charity for our own glory. Do not do the charity for our own glory. And secondly, he says that, do not pray like hypocrites. Secondly, do not pray like hypocrites. And third one, do not take fasting like hypocrites. What is the, what is the, what is the speciality uh, of uh, the hypocrites? They are always doing something for themselves for their own glory, for their own fame, for the publicity of them. At the same time, here Jesus is saying that when you do something, do not do the charity for your own glory. Amen. Do not pray like hypocrites and do not take fasting like hypocrites. But remember, the call of God on us is to, be, to, to go and do something with Jesus. Hallelujah. Do something with Jesus. Don't do without Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. That's, that's the main point in 6, six to 1, that the call of God is I mean, to go with Jesus. Hallelujah. Wherever we go, whenever we go, and whatever we do, hallelujah, we need the presence of Jesus Christ with us. Hallelujah. If Jesus is with us, I mean, we will be doing everything in a pro proper way. Hallelujah. And when, whenever we trust in ourselves, and whenever we do something, I mean, with our strength, with our wisdom, with our knowledge or with our experience, I mean, nothing is going to happen. Hallelujah. But when we trust in the Lord and we, I mean, when we, I mean, I mean, ask the, 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 the advice from the Lord, the Lord, and I need the counsel from you, Lord, and I need that advice from you, and I'm going to do something for the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. You know, Jesus was always, I mean, speaking against the, the hypocrisy. Hallelujah. In these verses itself, I mean, Jesus is speaking against the hypocrisy. I know the hypocrites were always, I mean, pleasing themselves and they were just pleasing, trying to please the people of people there. But I mean, Jesus is saying that, okay, you don't please the people. I mean, you don't, I mean, look after your own glory, but do something, I mean, secretly, that will be the glory for the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. That's what we understand from this sixth point. I mean, go always with Jesus Christ and go always and do something with Jesus Christ, with the help of Jesus Christ and with the presence of Jesus Christ. When you do that, that will be a glory for the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. And they will come to the seventh point, the seventh point. That is the call of God to, to, to taste him. The call of God to taste him. Amen. That is the seventh point. Amen. The call of God to taste him. The same verse, Hebrews chapter 13, verse 13 is the same verse. I mean, we already read that verse. I mean, it says that let us go out to him outside the camp bearing his reproach. Hallelujah. The call of God to taste him. What do you mean by tasting God? Amen. You know, here it says that you have to 
bear the reproach of Jesus Christ and reproach in his name. Hallelujah. Bearing the reproach of Jesus Christ. The real meaning of that is we have to taste God in our life. That's what we read in Psalm number 34, verse 8. Psalm number 34, verse 8. This Both is, taste and see that the Lord is good. This is by heart for everyone. who trust in him. That verse is by heart for everyone. Taste and see that the Lord is good. When we taste Jesus, we are supposed to taste what Jesus already tasted. Is that right? When we taste God, when we taste Jesus Christ, you know, we are supposed to taste what Jesus already tasted. What Jesus tasted? He tasted the sufferings. He already tasted the sufferings. He already tasted the death on the cross. He already tasted the reproach. He already tasted the hatredness. You know, we read in the Bible that I mean, he came to his own people, but they did not accept him. They rejected him. The people of Israel, they rejected Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. That's what we, we, we are reading I mean, from the Bible. Hallelujah. They did not accept Jesus Christ. He came to his own people. That means the people of Israel, in the midst of the people of Israel. But they were saying that, okay, this Jesus is not our Messiah. This Jesus is not our Messiah. We don't want this Jesus. I mean, the, 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 the king should be, I mean, born in a palace. You know, Jesus is not born in a palace. I mean, he is, I mean, just born into the, into the, into the street. So we don't want this Jesus. We don't want this Messiah. We cannot accept Jesus as a Messiah. And we are expecting the another political leader to establish our kingdom, to, to establish the kingdom of Israel. Hallelujah. So this is what we understand. Those people were not accepting Jesus as their Messiah. At the same time, we got a chance and we got a privilege in our life to taste Jesus Christ in our life. Hallelujah. That means, you know, when we say that, oh Lord, I'm bearing the reproach for Jesus Christ in my body, in my life, that means we are tasting God and we are tasting that see that the Lord is good. Hallelujah. Tasting God is a it's, it's a privilege for the people of God. Tasting God is a privilege of the people of God. Hallelujah. We are tasting always Lord and because I mean we are supposed to taste all the all the things that the, 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 the Jesus has done already and he already tasted. Hallelujah. He was tasting all the suffering of this world. I mean he was tasting the death in this world, reproaches of this world, shame and blame and accusation everything he was facing hallelujah and he was bearing all the reproach of his world hallelujah and even his own people at the same time he said that again i'm so happy because i mean i can save the people i mean even though i'm going through this persecution hallelujah jesus says that okay i am with you always because I have gone through all these troubles. Hallelujah. So this is what we understand also in our life also. Whenever we go through the struggle, hallelujah. Whenever we go through the persecution, whenever we go through the hatredness, hallelujah. The reproach, hallelujah. Remember the presence of Jesus Christ is always with us this morning. Hallelujah. And let us say, Lord of Oh Lord, I need your presence always in my life, oh God. Hallelujah. And Bible says, I mean, hallelujah. Jesus said, I am with you always. I mean, until the end of this world. Hallelujah. So that presence of God is with us always in our life. And let us trust in the Lord. Let us taste in the Lord. And, 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 and the, the seventh point says, the call of God is to taste him. To taste him. And the eighth point, eighth point, and that is the last point. You know, that is uh, the call of God gives us the assurance of future hope. The call of God gives us the assurance of future hope. Let us read uh, Hebrews chapter 13, verse 14. Chapter 13, verse 14. For here we have no continuing city, but we seek the one to come. Amen. The call of God gives us the assurance of the future hope. Here, in this verse, it says that here we do not have a lasting city, but we are seeking the city 
which is to come. Here, we do not have a lasting city, but we are waiting and we are seeking for the city which is to come, which is to come. You know, the Hebrew people on those days, they were very much concerned about, uh, uh, and, and they were always, I mean, always proud about the city of Jerusalem. Okay, so the city, uh, they were, I mean, saying that, okay, uh, we are the people of the city of Jerusalem, and we are so happy, and all that they were singing and praising God, that, I mean, God made, the, made them to, I mean, become the Jewish people, and God made them uh, like, uh, you know, you know uh, to, to, God enabled them to, I mean, born in, in, the, in that city. I mean, they were always proud about the city of Jerusalem. So that's the one reason that the, the book of Hebrews, I mean, the, the author of the book of Hebrews is saying here that do not be proud about anything of this world. Just like the city of Jerusalem, you are proud about and you are always concerned about the city of Jerusalem in this world. But you have to remember one thing as you are a Christian, as you are converted to Christianity from Jewish religion, you have to remember one thing that you should have the assurance of the future hope. And we do not have a lasting city here. The city of Jerusalem is not lasting. The city of Jerusalem is not permanent for you. I mean, but seek the city which is to come. I mean, God is preparing the another city of Jerusalem for you. Hallelujah. That is the future hope of the people of God. Hallelujah. That's what we understand from this verse also. Hallelujah. And we have to understand, even though they were proud about the city of Jerusalem, I mean, even though they were always concerned about and speaking many things about the, I mean, I mean about the city of Jerusalem, the reality is different. The reality is, I mean, in history, I mean, it says that in almost 40, I mean, years after the death of Jesus Christ, I mean, the city of Jerusalem was totally destroyed by the Roman people, Roman I mean, emperor. Hallelujah. You know, after I mean, the 40 years of the death of Jesus Christ, the city of Jerusalem was totally destroyed by the Romans, by the Romans. I mean, so remember, only the people who has the clear vision about the future of a lasting city will be aware about the insecurity and the vanity of the present world or present city. Hallelujah. You know, most of the people, most of the children of God, they are not well aware. They are not well informed about the future hope. They do not have the vision of the future everlasting city. Amen. I mean, always the people are trusting in the insecurity and the vanity of this present world. They do not know that it's, it's, it's in, there is insecurity in this world and there is vanity in this world. And always those people, some of the people are trusting everything in this material thing and which is, which is in the world. Hallelujah. But we have to think about, I mean, if you are getting the vision, the clear vision about the future everlasting city, which is going to come. Hallelujah. I mean, we will say that, oh Lord, I don't want all these insecurity things. I don't want all these vanity things. I mean, I'm trusting in the Lord. I need to be there, the member of the, the city of the new city of everlasting Jerusalem. Hallelujah. So let us know that we are the citizens of the city which is to come. Hallelujah. The city, we are the citizens of the city which is to come. And the city which has the foundations and the heavenly Jerusalem and the city which cannot be shaken. And let us give up all the worldly pleasures and move forward with God of entering into heaven. Hallelujah. Many times we are not thinking about the heaven. We are not thinking about the future hope. Always we are thinking about the worldly pleasures and worldly I mean, blessings and everything. But remember this morning, this is what the Bible says that, I mean, always look forward and always look up uh, to, the, to the above. And I mean, God is preparing a city which is to come. Hallelujah. The, the, the city, I mean, which has the foundation. Hallelujah. The city which is everlasting. The city which is having the, the, the foundation and the lasting city. Hallelujah. That is the heavenly city. I mean, there is no pressures of this world. Hallelujah. And God will allow us to enter into that city. And, that is our expectation. Hallelujah. So remember, every area of our nation is becoming worse and worse. You know, the present situation 
of the world, every country, every city. Okay, when you think about all those things, you know, you know there are many things happening unexpected. You know, it gets, uh, I mean, corrupted every day, every day, in every area, the corruption is happening. You know, the political area, the social area, I mean, the religious area, wherever you look, I mean, everywhere there is corruption. There is, I mean, I mean, problems and there is, I mean, it is becoming worse and worse and worse. Hallelujah. So remember, there are many un unexpected things also happening. You know, we were not, uh, I mean, uh, aware about many things in, in this world which is happening. Disasters are happening. Tragedies are happening. Okay, uh, maybe I mean uh, maybe death jokes are happening. Flood is happening. No, heavy rains are there. No, landsliding is there. Okay, you have to think about that. The, this earth is shaking. The earth is shaking. That is what the clearly. I mean, the, the book of the I mean, author of the book of Hebrews says that. Okay, this is shaken. The city, all this world, all the countries. I mean, the earth is shaking. You know, even in even even in Kerala also, what is happening? There is a cube. No, in the previous days, then these days the flood is there, the heavy rain is there, landsliding in our area also, in Nilambur area, Malappuram district also. I mean, that is happening. You know, the earth is shaking. But remember, remember, this earth and the cities of the earth is not permanent. Alleluia. But for us, there is a heavenly Jerusalem that is city, I mean, for which is going to come. Hallelujah. And we are always reminded about, I mean, the assurance of the future hope. Hallelujah. Many times, I mean, I mean, we are not aware about the future hope. Hallelujah. We are always thinking about all those things, that, I mean, which is in this world. But this morning, this is the, I mean, encouraging word for every one of us. Hallelujah. Think about, I mean, which is in heaven. Hallelujah. Think about which is in, I mean, heaven. Hallelujah. We are not the citizen of this world. We are the citizen of heaven. Hallelujah. Shall we all close our eyes in the presence of God this morning? Hallelujah. I mean, we have been hearing from the word of God, especially from, I mean, Hebrews chapter 13, verses 12, 13, and 14. Hallelujah. We have been hearing many things from the word of God. Hallelujah. Let us commit us with the mighty hand of God. Hallelujah. This is the right time to commit us with the mighty hand of God. Hallelujah. Everyone, everyone, close your eyes and take a decision. I mean, according to the call of God. Hallelujah. Take a decision. The Lord, I mean, I'm coming to your presence of God. Hallelujah. I need your help, oh God. I need, I mean, we are trusting in you, Lord. Hallelujah. I mean, we have been hearing about the call of God to move forward. Hallelujah. We are supposed to move forward. We are supposed to, I mean, move forward. The first call is to lead us to, I mean, outside the camp. Outside the city of Jerusalem means, I mean, outside the comfort zone of our life. Hallelujah. Outside the, 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 the prosperity of our life. Hallelujah. Secondly, the call of God never leads us to worldly prosperity. Hallelujah. The, my dear, I mean, brothers and sisters, hallelujah, do not go after, do not run after the worldly pleasures, the worldly the prosperity hallelujah i mean it will end in a day hallelujah but we are not i mean going or running after the worldly pleasures i mean worldly prosperity i mean god will not give us the worldly i mean i mean prosperity hallelujah whatever god gives us i mean that is for the name of the lord that is for the kingdom of god hallelujah and thirdly hallelujah the call of god never leads us to poverty hallelujah remember I mean, God and call of God never lead us to poverty. Hallelujah. God will provide everything. Just like Elijah. I mean, Elijah was, I mean, fed by God in a, in a different way. Hallelujah. I mean, the man, the human being cannot understand the raven is giving the food, I mean, and the meat, I mean, the bread uh, to, to prophet Elijah. Hallelujah. The, the, from our head knowledge, we cannot say that, okay, okay, I don't believe that the ravens are providing, I mean, food for Prophet Elijah. But God can do that. God can arrange everything for the people of God. Hallelujah. Even though, I mean, we are going through the struggles, I mean, I mean struggles and troubles in our life. Hallelujah. I mean, remember how God is able to provide everything in due time. Hallelujah. The miracles will happen in the due time. Hallelujah. Do not be worried about anything of this world. Hallelujah. Do not be worried about, do not be anxious about anything of this world. Hallelujah. I mean, what God knows, whatever you need. 
Hallelujah. Jesus also said, I mean, you, when you pray, you pray like this, Father God, we need our daily bread. Hallelujah. I mean, the, the person who is faithfully serving God, the, the person, I mean, who is faithfully living I mean, for the name of the Lord, not for his own name, not for his own glory, that person will be fed by the Lord. Hallelujah. This morning, I mean, I, I have the assurance that God is our provider. Hallelujah. God is the protector and he is promising us that again, I am with you always until the end of this world. Hallelujah. And God is promising us that, I mean, God is caring for us. Hallelujah. And also, I mean, hallelujah, the, 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 the call of God to be sanctified. We need a sanctification. Hallelujah. Every one of us, we need a sanctification. Hallelujah. It's, it's, it's a progressive sanctification. Hallelujah. It's an initial, I mean, sanctification is done. Hallelujah. Now we are happening, I mean, in our life, which is happening, the, the, the progressive sanctification. Every day, every day, every moment, I mean, go to the presence of God and ask to the Lord, oh Lord, I am coming to your presence, oh Lord. I need the sanctification. Hallelujah. I need to be sanctified again and again about my weakness of God, again and again about my sin of God. Hallelujah. Let us pray in the presence of God this morning. Oh Lord, I need the sanctification. I mean, from the blood of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ died on the cross of Calvary. I mean, he shed his blood on the cross of Calvary to sanctify the people of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. And the next call is the, God, the call of God to encourage us to bear the reproach of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. We are the people, those who are called out, I mean, from the darkness to proclaim the name of the Lord that we were hearing, I mean, in the, in the previous, I mean, I mean, Sunday. But at the same time, we have to I mean, bear the reproach of Jesus Christ in our life and we are, I mean, doing something for the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. And sixth one, the call of God to go with Jesus. Hallelujah. Whatever we do, whenever we go, wherever we go, go with Jesus. Hallelujah. If the presence of God, the presence of Jesus is with you, I mean, he will do the miracles. Hallelujah. He will do the miracles. We don't want to go after the miracle. God is ready and God is willing to do the miracle if you are being with Jesus. If you are living with Jesus, if you are, I mean, always, I mean, I mean, wanted to, I mean, to, to desire the presence of God with me always. Hallelujah. God is there in front of you and he will make the way. Hallelujah. We sing the song that again, God will make a way. Hallelujah. God will make a way. God will provide the, the, the blessings upon us in the, in the coming days. Hallelujah. But let us be faithful in the presence of God. Let us be satisfied. Let us be content enough, I mean, with what we are receiving from the Lord. Hallelujah. I mean, the seventh point, the call of God to take, to taste him. The call of God, God to taste him. Hallelujah. Let us taste God in our life. Hallelujah. Tasting Jesus Christ means, I mean, Jesus Christ already tasted many sufferings things will die. Jesus Christ already gone through different kinds of, I mean, persecutions and shame and blame and accusation in his life. At the same time, this morning, God is saying to you and me that taste God, taste God, taste God, not only that God is good, but taste God, whatever he tasted already. Hallelujah. So whenever we go through the I mean, difficult situation in our life, remember that God, Jesus Christ, already tasted everything and he is saying that, okay, I am with you always. I will help you. I will strengthen you. Hallelujah. The last point is the call of God gives us the assurance of the future hope. Hallelujah. Remember, my dear, I mean, brothers and sisters, we are not the people of this world. We are the citizens of heaven. Hallelujah. How many of you believe that we are the citizens of heaven? Hallelujah. We have a reward in heaven. We have a reward in heaven. Hallelujah. We don't have any reward here in this world. I mean, we are not looking for the, I mean, shaking earth. We are not looking for the shaking city. I mean, the, 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 I mean, uh, the temporary city of Jerusalem. But we are always seeking for the future hope. The future of a believer is the I mean, city which is founded by God himself. Hallelujah. The city I mean, which is everlasting, the, which, uh, the, 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 the city which has the foundation, hallelujah, and the city which is not, I mean, which is unshakable, hallelujah. So our expectation is heaven. Our expectation is that city of Jerusalem, and we are going to become the members of that city, hallelujah. And this is the privilege for the people of God. God has given, I mean, every one of us this morning, hallelujah. God is saying that, okay, I mean, I am with you always, hallelujah. I'm calling you, I'm calling you to move forward, hallelujah. 
God is calling every one of us to move forward to do something for the name of the Lord, not for the fame of ourselves, not for our own fame, not for our own name, not for the publicity. Do something, I mean, for the name of the Lord. Do something for the glory of the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's all, I mean, surrender our life to the presence of God this morning. Hallelujah. As we were hearing the word of God. I mean, let, let us not, I mean, just hear us of the word of God, but let us. I mean, do something for the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Whenever we hear the message, you know, I, I mean, uh, in, the, in the initial stage of this message, I told you, I mean, whenever I preach something from the word of God, in my life, I think something that, okay, okay, we need a change. We need a change. Hallelujah. I mean, if, if there is no change in our life, there is no profit at all if you are hearing the, the, the message of God. So let us also surrender life to the presence of God. According to the word of God, let us take a decision in the presence of God. Let us be fruitful for the kingdom of God. And I request, I mean, uh, Sister Giro to lead us in prayer. Sister Giro to lead us in prayer. Hallelujah.